Seven minutes after the hour of 7 o'clock, time for a look at the news for a Wednesday, the 14th day of February for 2018. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Well, the issue of whether to designate the McCallumie River as wild and scenic once again appeared before the Amador County Board of Supervisors Tuesday. At issue was a report on the wild and scenic designation mandated by state legislation passed last year which the supervisors are preparing to draft a comment letter to respond to. Supporters and opponents of the designation lined up to comment with great urgency. Supporters emphasized the need to keep the McCallumie River free from further dam construction. While opponents raised concerns, the designation would impede on use of the river and private property rights. A subcommittee of Supervisor Onetto and Board Chair Morgan will draft a final response letter to that report. In other business, the board voted to provide the Amador Water Agency with $19,000 in state emergency funds to help mitigate dead and dying trees on AWA property. The board also approved drafting letters of support for five different state planning grant applications by the Amador County Transportation Commission to help pay for various transportation improvements around the county. The board then heard a report on operations at the now-closed Buena Vista Landfill Noting a series of increased maintenance and regulatory costs of that facility, Supervisor Forrester raised the possibility of reopening the landfill to mitigate the ongoing costs. A face-off is brewing between Calaveras County and PG&E over losses from the Butte Fire. The Calaveras supervisors yesterday announced they are filing a lawsuit against the utility for its role in triggering the deadly disaster. The lawsuit will attempt to recover millions in taxpayer losses. The board made the unanimous decision in closed session yesterday to retain Barron and Bud and the California Fire Lawyers to initiate litigation. Calaveras County, which is still in disaster recovery mode from the Butte Fire, suffered negative financial and economic impacts running into the tens of millions, an amount that officials say will continue to compound in several areas. Among those are lost taxpayer funds, damaged infrastructure and natural resources, fire suppression costs, government employee overtime, and ongoing emergency response and recovery efforts. For some time now, county officials have been conferring with national experts to collect numbers and supporting data in order to calculate damages from the 70,000-plus acre wildfire whose official cause was determined to be a tree that fell into a PG&E utility pole. Barron and Bud, which has offices in Los Angeles and San Diego and is headquartered in Dallas, Texas, is among the nation's largest plaintiff's law firms. The California fire lawyers include the Singleton Law Firm. Well, despite emotional testimony from the applicant, the Amador Planning Commission upheld a denial of a permit to allow the long-term use of an RV on a property in Pioneer. Meeting Tuesday night, the commission heard often tearful testimony from a woman who lives on Rocky Lane describing her struggles with mental illness and maintaining a job as she asked for a permit to live in an RV on her property while renting out the main house. County regulations allow long-term RVs to care for family members or to provide housing for caretakers, but neither of those circumstances applied in this situation, so county staff had denied the permit. Half a dozen residents who live nearby testified in public comment against granting the permit, citing the hit that their property values would take. The commission voted four to nothing to uphold the denial, saying they couldn't find grounds to overturn county staff's decision. In other business, the commission voted to recommend that the Board of Supervisors approve a general planned amendment and rezone for a pair of properties just outside of Amador City. The land would be redesignated agricultural transition and zoned for large lot residential development. One of the properties would be split into three five-acre parcels. The proposal will now go back to the Board of Supervisors for final approval. And facing the likelihood of adding to multiple cannabis-related legal moves already initiated against Calaveras County, the Board of Supervisors took no action yesterday on a resolution to give voters a chance to choose between banning or regulating cannabis cultivation and related commercial activities. 
The ban ordinance approved by the board on January 10th will now go into effect March 9th. The regulatory program that existed under an urgency ordinance is now winding down, and registered growers will have 90 days from March 9th to wrap up whatever cannabis-related business they still operate in Calaveras County. But Calaveras growers are not going quietly. Earlier in the day, the Calaveras Cannabis Legal Defense Fund filed a lawsuit challenging the Board of Supervisors' certification of an environmental impact report that accompanied the January 10th ban ordinance. The lawyers are challenging Calaveras County, the Board of Supervisors, the County Planning Department, and unidentified others. They say the ban ordinance and EIR approved by the board will have disastrous environmental and economic consequences for the county and its residents. Lawyers for registered growers say they will prove Calaveras County, the board, the county planning department, and others fraudulently failed to recognize real-world consequences of adopting and attempting to enforce the January 10th ban ordinance instead of continuing to carefully regulate the cannabis industry. Well, now that the filing period is officially open for the June 5th primary, a handful of incumbents and challengers have filed their declaration of candidacy papers in Amador County. According to County Registrar voters Kim Grady, as of yesterday, the following people have filed a judicial declaration of intent. For Superior Court Judge Office 1, J.S. Hermanson, for Superior Court Judge Office 2, Renee Day and Robert Schell. The following have filed declaration of candidacy for these offices. For County Clerk Recorder, Kim Grady. Lockwood Fire Protection District, Lois Cookie Stevens. Sheriff Coroner, Martin Ryan. County Superintendent of Schools, Amy Slavinsky. And Treasurer Tax Collector, Mike Ryan. The candidate filing period runs through March 9th. And Grady says she expects candidates for the other offices will begin to come in on a daily basis. Looking even further ahead, Grady says the first day vote-by-mail ballots can be mailed is May 7th. And a possible water service interruption in uh, Rancho Calaveras today. There will be a planned water shutdown from 8 a.m. to 3.30 today at the intersection of Redmond and Goggin Roads in Cal Rancho Calaveras. About 50 customers in the area may have their water service impacted or interrupted. The district hung door tags yesterday at properties that are likely to be impacted. The shutdown is necessary to allow CCWD to install a mainline pressure-reducing valve, a PRV, which will help reduce high water pressure at homes in the area. CCWD has also installed mainline PRVs at the intersections of McAtee and Goggin Roads, as well as the intersection of, of O'Reilly and McAtee Road. Anyone with questions can contact CCWD Customer Service, 754-3543. And the 6th Annual Father-Daughter Dance in Sutter Creek is set for this Saturday from 6 to 8. Sutter Creek Auditorium will be transformed into a magical room filled with decorations, games, and surprises. A DJ will be on hand, spinning everyone's favorite tunes for dancing. It'll be an evening of special memories for dads, granddads, uncles, and special friends that they can enjoy with their favorite girls. Tickets include dancing and the dessert buffet, $20 for two, $10 for an additional child. They're available throughout a number of Sutter Creek residents, uh, uh, businesses rather. <laughs> or for more information, visit suttercreek.org. And don't forget, you have until 10 o'clock this morning to purchase tickets for the one of the biggest, if not the biggest, Take a Chance on Love Valentine's Day drawing. This is the ninth annual event. We'll be at the Jackson Hospice Thrift Store at 2 o'clock today, broadcasting live the drawing. And again, the top prize, a $13,000 set of diamond earrings, as well as a number of other prizes. Our friends from hospice will be here around 740 this morning. We'll talk a little bit more, give you one last chance to buy those tickets. Uh, again, you can go to uh, Hospice of Amador or hospiceofcalaveras.org to purchase your tickets today. $10 a ticket or two for one if you purchase 100 or more. And that's a look at local news on a gold country. Wednesday morning, Valentine's Day, this 14th day of the month of February. From the KVGC News Center, I'm Jim Geedy.